We're right here in Nakameguro. This is the neighborhood of the stars in Tokyo. And right behind me is Nakameguro Atlas Tower, by far the tallest building around here. We're going to see the penthouse today, which is actually for rent, and it is absolutely magnificent. But before we do, let's go see the neighborhood. Nakameguro is well known for its low rises and narrow roads dotted with shops and restaurants. So yeah, this building really stands out. I've covered this neighborhood countless times on the channel, but there's always more things to say about it. Directly near the building is Banh Mi Ba Ba, my favorite Banh Mi restaurant in the city. If you go, get the pork pate, ham, and chicken mixed Banh Mi with extra chilies. You won't regret it. Nearby, there's also the Gems Building, with its many great restaurants, notably the Nakameguro branch of Katsu, one of the best-rated conveyor belt sushi places in Tokyo. You'll also be walking this into Trasparente, a bakery that makes one of the few good baguettes here, and just down the street from that is the unbelievably popular donut stand. I'm Donut? which regularly gets hour-long lines. Get one of those and wash it down with a cup of coffee from Anibus? An Anibus? Anibus? No, not really sure, but great coffee either way. Now, let's get back to the apartment. And now we're inside, up on the 45th floor. I have to say, it takes a little while to get up the elevator, but once you're up here, you can see you have a grandiose entrance, of course, with the marble floors and everything. But right next to that is, of course, like in every great Japanese apartment or house, a pretty damn sizable uh, walk-in shoe closet. But this is quite normal. What I would say, though, is that you have something a little bit less normal on this side, which is, as I cook my shoes out of the way, this, a walk-in coat closet. And you know, that's pretty much the norm in every country in the world, but in Japan, it is surprisingly hard to find a place with a coat closet. So as you can see inside here, you have all these different individual kind of cubbies so you can separate out the coats for your mother, your sister, your friends, your family, doesn't really matter who. Coats are coats, and this is where they go. And right outside here, you can see the very grandiose hallway, a uh, very long hallway. I'm gonna show you how long in a minute. And why is it so long? Well, this basically takes up the entire western side of this building. So it's a very, very long area. And just coming down here, we'll hit each room one by one. Right through here, you have a very ominous room with no windows whatsoever. And well, I would use this maybe as like an extra closet or just a little kind of studio thing if you're into, I don't know, recording or streaming or something like that. That's a good little place to have it, soundproof the hell out of it. Next one, right down here, you have the first thing that comes to my mind when I come back home is, oh, I need to use the bathroom. And here is said bathroom. It's right next to the entrance, which is great. Has its own sink, has its own little area right over here. And of course, it's one of the happy toilets. It just opens right up for you. Now, let's come on over here. And right here to my left is actually by far the best part of this apartment. We'll get to that later. But before we do that, let's go see the main bathroom. So right next to the bathroom, I want to show you this one door that we have right here. So you can see it's a big mirror, and why is this kind of door thing here? It's because in Japan, if a building is too tall, you need to divide up the rooms with a firewall. This is considered a firewall, it's fireproof. And they decided to put a mirror on this, which is kind of nice. I've never seen a mirror on one of these, but you can take a look at yourself before you go out and uh, have a nice night at the town. But right next to that is this, which is not the bathroom, it's actually the laundry room. And basically like every other place in Japan that's for rent, this does not come with a washer or dryer. You just have this guy right here, which is where you stick your washer and dryer. You have a drain down there and a little water spout up here. And once you're done with that, you can, well, uh, fold all of your clothing right over here and maybe put some towels or something into there too, which is kind of nice. So in this laundry room, you don't just have your washing machine area over there, but you have a sink over here too if you need to do a little extra cleaning of something. But right next to that is one of my favorite features of this apartment. And to be honest, it really shouldn't be a feature, but in Japan, this is considered a feature. It is is the second toilet, which just like the first one is very happy to see us, opens right up right when you come in and says hi to you. So uh, goodbye, see you later. And right next to that is, well, the actual 
bathroom bathroom. So come on over here. It is quite spacious. This is a two bedroom, one and a half bath. And here is your grandiose bath. Of course, you have the dual vanity setup with the marble countertops as well. And what looks like a lot of storage, it's not that much. It's only really here, here, and the one over to the left, but it is plenty of storage. Little uh, medicine cabinet for all of your cosmetics or whatever you may have in there. A lot of pills maybe. But you do also have this storage over here just for linens and all that kind of stuff too. But my favorite part is this. The glass door leading into your very spacious bath suite. Something out of a nice hotel or something in Japan. As you can see, extremely spacious. Uh, I would say probably big enough for the cameraman to fit in as well. Why don't you come on in and see if you can fit in here actually, come on. Yeah, oh, here we go. This is a first for the channel, guys. Oh yeah, don't, don't show that on camera. Uh, a first for the channel, cameraman in the tub with me. But as you can see, very spacious. And right behind the cameraman, you can't actually see on my side, is a TV. So you can watch all the Tokyo portfolio videos you'd like while you're enjoying your bath. So one thing before we go into the bedrooms, I just want to show you here. And if you look on the other videos on my channel, you'll see this a lot, is this little panel right here, which allows you to dry the bath and all that. One thing that this has that most places don't is this button, it says sauna. So if you press this, then that guy opens up and this whole thing basically becomes a steam sauna. That's pretty cool. So coming into the smaller of the two bedrooms, you can notice right away that it's actually not that small. It's a pretty decent size for a bedroom, at least over here. But what you will notice is you have a lot of stuff over here. And this is exactly as it looks. It's all uh, what used to be in the kitchen. Uh, they have recently renovated, but they haven't actually taken all this stuff out. It's just being here for a little bit. But don't worry, by the time you move in, this will all be cleared out. Trust me on that one. So coming out of the second bedroom, or smaller of the two bedrooms, you can see that this is where the master bedroom is. And oh boy, it's big. It's real big, in fact. This is basically the size, if you include the closet, of like a normal starter apartment for somebody who just moved to Tokyo, about like 25 square meters or so. And as you can see, this is the headboard for what used to be a bed right here. This is a king size headboard and there's plenty of space. You could even have a little lounge area over there. Definitely a TV right in front and right over here, of course, with any nice bedroom has a very nice walk-in closet. One thing I like about this closet is that these little French doors over here, you don't really find those in Japan. But one thing you definitely need if you are going to have a nice bedroom in a nice penthouse is of course a beautiful view. And let's go check out the balcony. As you can see, it's quite wide. It goes all the way from here to the end of uh, basically where the living room is, which is where we'll go next. But yeah, you can see you have this sprawling view of Tokyo. To the left over there, you have Sangenjaya. To the middle, you also have Shibuya, that area, and then Shinjuku to the right. But on a clear day again, yes, you would be able to see Mount Fuji. And I'm very mad that today is so overcast, but what are you gonna do? Now, let's go see the best part of this apartment the living room. And now we're in the kitchen, which is right next to, of course, my favorite part, right over there. But as you can see, it's very long and uh, wide, but also it has more or less the standard features of a Japanese kitchen, which would be a three burner gas stove, very nicely done. And of course, the fish grill, which you could use for fish, pizza, toast, whatever you like. And well, something you don't really see in too many Japanese apartments or houses is this right here, which is a full size. And I am not joking when I say full size, AEG, AEG, you know, the German company, dishwasher, which is very, very nice to have in here. And that is, of course, seated below these beautiful countertops, the same kind of marble that you saw in the bathroom uh, over there, the vanity setup. And as you can see, you have this right here, which is pretty hard to find in Japan, a garbage disposal. And this is considered a feature in Japan because most places just don't have this. You really only find it in very new and very uh, big apartment buildings. And nice ones at that, like this one is. But right over here, you can see you have uh, these kind of shelving units built into the wall, and I just love them. 
right? If you look really closely, you can see you have brass trim all over the place and these doors right here, they slide very nicely. And if you look really closely, you can see that it has a Louis Vuitton-like pattern just kind of punched into this brass plate right here, which just makes this look very, very nice and goes with the rest of the living room, which we should go see right now. So right next to the kitchen, you see you have an actual breakfast bar. And this is a pretty good height, to be honest. I, I like how you can sit right here and not have to kind of hunch over while you're eating. And it even comes with three little chairs. And if you don't like these chairs, you can get your own, of course. But one thing I want to show is right here, you have this uh, very green area. Well, this is a reception area. This is like a welcoming area because at one point, well, one of the previous tenants kind of ran this as their office. So this is what the uh, people that were coming in to have a meeting would see when they first walked in. And I quite like having that. So right next to this little entranceway, this little welcome area, you can see you have a panel here, which just has a lot of different knobs and bills and whistles on it. These are the actual light switches for this room. Every one of them is here. And as you can see, they're all actually dimmable, which is pretty rare to find in Japan, in fact. But my favorite panel in this is this top guy right here, which is the floor heating. And I have to say it is very nice and warm in here. I've had the floor heating on the entire time. But one thing to note about this place is, as I said, the previous tenant kind of used this as an office and the owner was okay with him uh, renovating the place and doing it exactly as he wanted, as you can see he did. And that's a pretty rare thing in Japan. So yeah, this is another perk of this place is if you want to renovate it to the way that you want, then you can just have to let the owner know. So one thing that the owner decided to leave in here after the previous tenant left is this guy right here, which is a little faux fireplace. And well, it actually blows out hot air, which is pretty cool. But my favorite part is if you press this button right over here, you can actually change the color too. So it's blue now, or you could do it in orange or red or a different kind of blue with some yellow maybe. But yeah, it's completely up to you. So getting up from next to the fireplace, you can see you have a little table over here with an HDMI port. Why is that? Well, if you look over here, you can see where that cable travels all the way to, which is this guy right here, a very nice Sony uh, brand new TV, very thin LCD TV. And I love how that looks. And right next to that, of course, again, this was kind of like an office, so they use this as a conference room. If you don't like any of the furniture in here, you can uh, get rid of it. But this is one thing you definitely should not get rid of, uh, the super mushroom. I'm not quite sure why that is here. Now, the last feature of this room is right over here. You can see you have what looks like a kind of smudgy uh, TV, or maybe like a large iPad, actually, built into the wall over here. If you just tilt this up a bit and press a button behind here, you will see that this is a bit more than that. It is actually a smart whiteboard, which you can control with this pen and eraser. It's pretty easy to use, just uh, start. Admittedly, I have very bad handwriting, but yeah, as it says, subscribe to Tokyo Portfolio for more videos like this. Now, if we come over here, we can see what at the end of the day really is the best part for most people, which is the view. And it's becoming nighttime, but you can see the twinkling lights of the Tokyo skyline from here. And unlike pretty much every other tall building in Tokyo, you really don't have anything near you to block your view. So you just have completely free views of, again, Mount Fuji on a clear day, which you can't really get anywhere else. Well, this place is listed for 1.65 million yen a month. And well, that comes out to about $12,000 a month these days. It's pretty pricey, but you get the best view in all of Nakameguro, which in my opinion is one of the best neighborhoods in Tokyo and a lot more for that. If you want to learn more about this property, it's actually listed on our website. So look in the link in the description below. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever the hell you like. And of course, subscribe to Tokyo Portfolio, just as the sign says. Until next time, thanks for watching.